Good morning and welcome to the Manitowoc Eyes June 2022 webcast. My name is Jason MacDonald. I am a technical training specialist here within the service department of Manitowoc Ice. Today we will be covering Manitowoc Neo Undercounter and our cool air modular units, the float switch, operation and troubleshooting. Please note that during our webcast today at the top right hand of your corner, we will have a ability to have questions submitted by our participants and the team here, Aaron Harder and Jared Glines will be answering your questions as we go through this. At the end of our webcast today, there will be a link to take a new online quiz. Uh, this can work both with your actual computer or on a mobile device such as your smartphone or tablet. It is important that you click submit at the end so that way you can get uh, your grade, your certificate and a PDF version of this presentation. The main topic today, float switch purpose and troubleshooting. Our Neo, Neo undercounter ice machines and the cool air modular units. I have a Neo here to my left and I have a cool air modular unit behind me. They utilize float switches to control ice thickness and to initiate the harvest cycle. This is a little bit different from our Indigo and Indigo Next machines and all previous lines of uh, Manitowocs that typically utilize a combination of a water level probe for water level and trough uh, fill and our ice thickness control probe to initiate the harvest cycle. The function of our float switch, they open and close to indicate to our circuit board the level of the water in the trough. The ice thickness float indicates that the water level we need to make a batch of ice has been reached. The harvest float indicates a harvest cycle needs to be initiated once that water drops below that float. Uh, the specifications on these normally uh, closed. The float operates as a magnetic reed switch. The float switch contacts are closed in the down position. When water lifts that float to the up position, the magnet in the float opens the contacts. The corresponding lights on the circuit board should be on when the float is up and should be off when the float is down. Note that both the Neo and the cool air units, uh, cool air modular and Neo undercounter units, uh, utilize the same circuit board. So the lights will be at the same spot on the board and they will correspond to the same floats in each unit. The floats on the Neo are located in the water trough. If uh, my camera operator Aaron can try to zoom in here, you'll notice uh, that they're actually in the on the left side of that water trough. And also here on the screen, you can see where they're located. There are a couple of ways. Uh, go ahead and turn back, please. There are a couple of ways here to identify these when you're when you're there. We have had questions of which which float is which. The front float, your ice thickness control float, has a black wire coming out of it as well as the bracket does not have a notch anywhere on it uh, on the sides like the harvest float switch. You'll notice that the harvest float switch there on the left hand corner has a little cutout to lock it in place. It also has a red wire coming off the top going through the bulkhead. Those are the main ways to identify your float switches on the Neo undercounter. Now, part of why we bring this chart up is to show what the floats might be doing when and how they uh, take advantage of the sequence of operations. One thing that can throw people at here is that pump pause. We do utilize a water trough thermistor to pause our pump and bring in fresh water. This is independent of the harvest float switch. So there are times you'll hear from people out in the field, you'll hear from your coworkers, I'm getting a fill, but the harvest float is satisfied. Sorry, the ice thickness float is satisfied. That's normal, that's in our, our programming. Now the operation during our pre-chill and up to two minutes in the free cycle, our ice thickness float is communicating with the board to tell us whether we need water or not. When that float is down during the pre-chill, that sends the signal to the board, it's time to fill us up with water and the water inlet valve should be energized. The ice thickness float comes from the factory in that middle position. That's just our standard bit. It's what we find uh, will make a good thick sheet of ice for you proper thickness with that eighth inch bridge that we're used to seeing. Uh, the float can be raised or lowered depending on uh, preference or depending on what the need is in that area. You can bring it up one level or down one level to uh, thicken or thin out your ice. 
Again, I just want to stress that you will see that uh, that water fill valve activate for seven seconds, regardless of water level. That's to prevent slushing. There are areas out there that struggle with that more than others. So don't think that your float isn't working in those cases. It's part of the board. The harvest float is not adjustable. That's what the purpose of that cutout in the bracket. Its only job is to tell the control board that we are out of water, the ice is thick enough, time to go into the harvest cycle. Again, remember that the, the float switches have closed contacts with the float in the down position, and they are open in the up position. I know we already covered a little bit, but it's always nicer to see how to adjust our ice thickness float. To the left uppermost uh, bracket there, our notch there, you can adjust it to a thicker bridge or the one furthest to the right for a thinner bridge. The middle is our factory setting. Cool air float switches are a little different. It, the unit looks similar to what you're used to seeing on our modular units. We have a water trough that'll come out. On the left-hand side, you'll see your ice thickness float switch. Next to that is your harvest float switch which is located just to the left of your water pump. To locate, to get access to these, it's easiest to uh, remove the front cover of the ice machine. Then you're gonna wanna remove your water curtain. And then drop the water trough. The biggest trick that we've always taught people before, easiest way to drop this trough, Cross your arms like an X so you can get your thumbs onto those tabs. And here, just like on the slide, you have your ice thickness float, your harvest float, right next to your water pump. Similar to with Neo, here in Cool Air, we energize the water inlet solenoid valve uh, during the pre-chill cycle. This will be done with the float in the down position, sending that signal to the board that we need water. This uh, will continue to fill until the high level float light on the circuit board illuminates, indicating that we have filled up as much as we need for that water. During the freeze cycle, we're gonna energize that water pump. We're gonna drop the water throughout the, in the trough and start circulating water over the evaporator. Our ice thickness float switch will give another signal to the board saying, hey, we need to fill again. That is for uh, anti-slush purposes. Maximum fill time is six minutes. If that water inlet valve has been energized for six consecutive minutes and we have not, uh, have not satisfied that ice thickness float, that water valve is going to shut off. We don't want to overflow in case there's an issue with that ice float not sending the signal back to the board. Water level raises that float and there's about a five second delay there before the uh, control board's gonna de-energize it. So it's not instantaneous. Uh, but remember, this is a true batch system. One trough of water is equal to one batch of ice. Three minutes into our free cycle on the cool air modular unit, you're gonna get a 12 second fill of water. Similar to what we discussed on NEO, this is gonna be independent of that float switch. So if the switch is satisfied because we're not uh, making ice fast, we're still getting that uh, we're still getting that 12 second fill. That does not indicate an issue with the float, does not in, uh, indicate an issue with the board. It's part of the programming. Once the harvest float drops down, because we've used up that water making our ice and it stays down for 10 seconds. The control board initiates a harvest uh, sequence. Uh, on every batch after the second batch, well, from the second batch on, we have a six minute lock in freeze. So if we drop down to the low level on that harvest float switch and the light goes off on the board and we have not uh, gone past six minutes, the machine's gonna stay in the freeze. Now, for troubleshooting purposes, you can bypass that six minute lock-in, but you have to turn the machine off and back on and do an initial startup. The first batch, we, we bypass that for troubleshooting purposes. You can adjust the ice thickness uh, float on a cool air unit. Uh, one big key that you wanna do is uh, look at your batch that just dropped, see, hey, uh, do I have my eighth inch bridge? Am I melted out any? Um, but you always wanna do this with the machine off is one big key. To adjust this, you end up turning the ice thickness float clockwise. Again, that is this float in here. 
you would use a wrench and turn that just to the clockwise position and that'll raise that ball up it'll sit higher it'll bring more water in for thicker ice and the inverse would be true adjust it counterclockwise uh, to decrease your bridge thickness make some thinner ice now what happens if we have a bore if we have a unit that will not fill with our water again both neo and cool air utilize the uh, water inlet valve with the use of the ice thickness float to tell the unit if we need water if you turn a unit on and it doesn't fill uh, during the pre-chill or any fills whatsoever during the freeze cycle, you're going to want to look at a couple of things. Is the ice thickness float stuck up or is it in the down position? If it is stuck up, take that float out of there. Uh, try to clean it out like I've got one right here. Try to make sure it's clean and you're able to move it up and down yourself. Uh, then you want to look at that circuit board itself. We got a board here. Uh, your lights are, are here in the middle. Is the high level float light on? If that light's lit, that's the board being told, I have my water, I don't need any, so it's not gonna call for it. After that, you wanna move to the ice thickness float diagnostics. Again, when the float is down, the light should be off, and the light must be on when the float is in the up position. If the control board does not respond to the float, with, the, with that uh, going up and down and the corresponding light, again, up, on, down, off. Uh, let's move to step one. Disconnect power to the machine, and then you're gonna pull that uh, float connector through the bulkhead. This is for Neo, mind you. You'll see that it comes out like this, but also, Aaron, if you can follow me, we'll try to do this here live. You can pull that straight through and you'll have access to your wires. You're gonna to wanna to attach your meter leads to each float uh, switch wire. Place the float in the down position. You should be getting a closed uh, reading. Then move it up and you should get an open reading. Typically what we'll expect when the float is up, you'd be reading open line or infinite. And when the float is down, you'll typically read less than one ohm. Consistency is pretty key. You want to see the same thing each time. And a lot of times on the on the phones, you'll hear people when you're ohming this out, tell you, hey, do it 15, 20, 30 different times just to be sure that you're seeing what you expect to see. Here on the screen, we've got a we've got a float in the down position uh, being ohmed out and then Below that in the up position, again, being ohmed out, seeing what we're expecting to see. Another picture, this is of a cool air. You'll notice that this has a plug on it, unlike uh, Neo with the wires coming out. So I wanna show the differences between our floats. You can do that here as well. You got your Neo with the wires and you got your cool air. It's just got that plug, so. Now, what happens if the machine won't go into the harvest cycle? Again, the harvest is initiated by the harvest float switch, monitoring the water level in the trough. Once the trough is empty, it's supposed to send that signal to the board, have the light go out, and then 10 seconds later, go into the harvest cycle. Now, remember, we do have a six minute lock and freeze before harvest can be initiated on every batch but the first, or the batch coming back from a full bin. Now, if, it, if the machine doesn't go into harvest, two things you're gonna see, unit was off with ice on the evaporator or the ice bin, uh, the ice damper or the bin switch. Uh, on this uh, cool air behind me, the bin switch works with the magnet in the curtain. And on our Neo, it's this ice damper here that has a magnet there on the right-hand side. When you start to diagnose anything, you wanna do it from a fresh uh, stance. Remove all ice from the evaporator before starting any of your diagnosis. On NEO, what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove your electrical panel so you can see that uh, circuit board. That's gonna be located here behind this grill on the NEO in a control box. And then pull the harvest float switch through the bulkhead, similar to the way I just had with the ice thickness float, and attach a jumper to the two wires that that float plugs into, as you see on the screen. 
You'll bypass that uh, lock and freeze timer by starting uh, the machine with the power button from the off uh, condition. Wait until water uh, flows over that evaporator and then look at the chart uh, to the right here on the screen. You'll see, hey, 10 seconds afterwards, the machine's gonna cycle itself from freeze to the harvest and the, and the control board light for harvest lights up on the board. You'll know, hey, my board can get its signal. So now we gotta move on to float switch diagnostics. But if the harvest light stays off and the machine remains in freeze, we wanna go to the next step. Disconnect the harvest uh, float wire from the control board and install a jumper straight where those wires plug in. Start the machine and refer to the chart. If the harvest light stays off and the machine stays in freeze 10 seconds after that water pump kicks on, maybe give yourself 12 seconds just to be sure. Your board can't see what it's being told. We have jumped it at the pins and it still can't recognize it. Uh, take the, the board out, make sure there's nothing on it, put it back in, maybe even try that test a second time. If it's still doing what you're seeing, you have a board that cannot recognize the signal, you're gonna have to replace the control board with one that does. But if 10 seconds into the freeze cycle, that machine cycles from freeze to harvest and the harvest light comes up on the board, we now know that either we have an issue with our harness that we just unplugged or with the float if we didn't do the previous step to bypass the float itself. On cool air, it's a little bit different again because the floats uh, plug in differently. We're not going to but we're not going to jump at the harness and try to go backwards like we did with the Neo. We're going to go straight to that step with the board. You're going to remove your control box cover. You're going to unplug the float switch from the board. You're going to attach that jumper to the terminals on the board and you're going to bypass the lock in by turning the toggle switch to off and then back to ice. Wait until that water's going over the evaporator and we're going to do the same thing we just did with Neo. The harvest light stays off and the machine stays in freeze 10 seconds after that pump kicks on. We have a board that cannot see the signal. We're jumping straight at the board. So we need to get a board that can see that signal. But if we have uh, 10 seconds into our free cycle, machine does go into the harvest, hot gas valve energizes, and the control board light on the board comes on, we've got either a problem with the harness we just unplugged or with the float itself. Go to omen that float out. If that passes, well, then we know that our issue is gonna be with that wiring harness. If the float doesn't pass, the odds are we have an issue with our float. Again, just want to show how we are omen these out and what that looks like. Now, we looked at a machine that will not go into harvest. What if we're going into harvest too soon? Just like we did before, we're still going to get access to the electrical panel. We're going to open up the board so we can see the lights. This time, though, we're going to disconnect the wires from the harvest float, but we're not going to jump anything. We're just going to leave them open to air. Again, we're going to bypass that lock and freeze time by turning the machine on from an off condition. Wait until water's going over the grid. That tells us we're in freeze and refer to our chart. All right, harvest light does not come on. Machine stays in freeze. That's a good thing at that, at that point. We took the float out. The float's not sending a signal to the board. That tells us that we need to look at our float switch. Let's say the harvest light comes on, but the ice machine stays in freeze. Let's verify that we were actually in our... Uh, Past our lock-in time, let's check, hey, what we saw on the on the lights here uh, and just start over. Sometimes that's the best way to go. But the third thing, 10 seconds into the freeze cycle, if the machine cycles from freeze to harvest and energizes the board, the light on the board, let's proceed to step three. Disconnect the, the float from the, from the board again, just like we did when we were gonna jump it out and uh, force the machine uh, into a harvest because it wouldn't. Now we're gonna just disconnect that harness directly from the board. Maybe the harness was telling us something that wasn't there. Let's say the harvest light doesn't come on. Hey, our low uh, float wire, that harness, that's causing our issue because that's what we found. We've isolated it to one uh, part. But if that machine does go into a harvest again with no harness plugged into the board, you don't have a float, you don't have a wire, that plug is just open to air. It's seeing something that isn't there. Yeah, well, the board is just not gonna do what you need it to. You're gonna have to get a board that can receive signals properly and you'll have to replace that control board. When we do this uh, with cool air, the modular unit again uh, we're not pulling anything through easiest way to go is just straight to the board again pull that uh, pull that harness from the board and see what's going on 
if the machine uh, goes into a premature harvest without that wire again, the board is seeing something that it's not supposed to see, guys. Um, at that point, we're condemning a circuit board, but if the harvest light doesn't come on, we have a issue either with our float, again, or the wire between the two. So ohm that float out if the machine doesn't go into the harvest cycle, maybe get yourself a new wiring harness on the way back. But again, key is if the machine goes into harvest without it unplugged, we've got a board that's seeing something that cannot be seen. But if it doesn't go into harvest with the float uh, unplugged, well, then we're looking at an issue with the uh, with the float itself or with the wiring harness. I want to thank everyone for coming today. Uh, we do have some upcoming webcasts. Next month, we will be doing a refrigerant recovery for our air, water, traditional remote, and quiet cube ice machines in July. In August, we're going to utilize uh, thermistor temperatures and how to convert that for what your refrigeration pressures are uh, actually doing. It's a way to not go straight to putting gauges on the unit. In September, we're going to go over our sequence of operation and how to use that as a troubleshooting tool. In October, we're going to over, go over cleaning heavily scaled ice machines. In November, as we get towards that winter time, we're going to go over quiet cube and re traditional remote headmaster operation and troubleshooting. Uh, December, we're going to go over the Indigo and Indigo Next event log and how to use that information to your advantage. And come January 2023, we're looking to have some additional text support resources on top of these webcasts. I'd like to thank everyone for coming to our seminar today. I've had a lot of help behind the scenes. I'd like to introduce my counterpart. I know I've mentioned his name at the beginning of it, but I'd like to bring Aaron Harder onto the screen. Uh, come on up, Aaron. Hello, as Jason said, I'm Aaron Harder. I just started as a technical training specialist at Manitowoc Ice here. Look forward to the opportunities that are going to be available to me in the future. You're probably going to see my face a lot more. I also want to point out uh, when you take this quiz, there's going to be a section in there for comments. We really appreciate any feedback that you can give us, anything that you'd like to learn, know about, uh, suggestions on how we can make this better. I appreciate your time. Look forward to seeing you guys in the future. Now, be advised there is a link here at the top. You can copy and paste that into a web browser so you can take this on your computer, or you can just scan that QR code using your phone or your tablet and take this on a mobile device. This is a mobile friendly uh, quiz. Uh, I just want to thank Aaron for coming on screen with us today and thanking all of you again for coming to our June 2022 webcast on the NEO and Cool Air Float Switch Operation and Troubleshooting. Thank you.